We're back here. This is the main event on Philly's number one college radio station, WHIP 215-204-9449 is the number if you want to call and hang with us. We all know our next guest, and he is Mr. Invincible himself, number 83, former Philadelphia Eagles legend. And uh, we all know the whole great movie that was made a few years ago where Mark Wahlberg played him, and that's my good buddy Vince Papali. Vince, it's Zach Gelb and Chase Sr. How you doing? Uh, good to see you, Zach. What's up? Hey, Chase. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for coming on, and we do appreciate it. And, Vince, I know you're big time in this Philadelphia area, and you love Philadelphia football, and you're a big Eagles fan. You played for the Eagles, and I know you did go to St. Joe's, so we'll try not to get anyone out here to harm you when you're on the airways with us, although you are a St. Joe's guy. But uh, being uh, Temple, they kicked off in Notre Dame on Saturday, and uh, this football program's trying to get a new life. Uh, they've had a new coach. Uh, they had three new coaches in the last four or five years, uh, starting with Al Golden, then to Steve Adazio, and now Matt Rule. I'm just wondering, as someone that's been in this area for a while, do you think Temple football could be a major player on Saturdays here in Philadelphia? Yeah, without a doubt. You know, I, I really believe that. And I think Al was one of the guys who started it rolling. You know, and he's looking look at the great job he's doing with all the issues he had to deal with down there in Miami. And, uh, you know, and, and you've, got the, you've got Coach, and he's coming in, and and Matt is, uh, you know, he's been around the game. He's been around Temple. He knows what's going on. Uh, right now, you know, he's got to get a recruiting class that's going to be his, uh, the type of players that he wants, and uh, it could eventually happen. But uh, a big-time game. I'm sorry I missed it because uh, you're going to hate me for this one, but my daughter cheers for Syracuse. So I was <laughs> there <at> the <laughs> Big rival communication school. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I was up at uh, I was up at MetLife Stadium, but uh, we were catching. Actually, uh, when when the score was coming out, everybody was at, was shocked. Say, wow, how close it was! And and listening to you and Chase, uh, I, I didn't I didn't follow the game so much from over here, but uh, you know some of the opportunities lost that could have been uh, a lot lot closer. Vince Chase here. Uh, again, thank you so much for joining us on Philly's number one college radio station. Your whole story and your journey is, is very compelling, and it really defines the working class, blue-collar city that Philadelphia is known to be. Uh, can you just talk about that journey? Because you did attend St. Joe's, as we mentioned earlier, and as many of us know, uh, St. Joe's doesn't even have a football program. So how did you even get into football and, and get that tryout with Dick Vormiel and the Philadelphia Eagles? Well, you know, it's a pretty fun story, and, and, and first of all, I'll preface it by saying that, you know, you mentioned the movie, uh, which sort of documented it. Uh, t today would be the beginning of the, uh, the, would be the end of the second week the movie's been out. Uh, seven years ago it came out, mm -hmm. and, uh, and right now we're ranked number one in the box office, which is like, wow, well, you kidding me? It's so cool. And, uh, you know, what it is, is uh, Chase, it's the story of a guy with a dream, and I went to Interborough High School. Uh, we wish we could have mentioned Interbrook. We wish we could have mentioned St. Joe's and, and everybody else in the movie. But, uh, you know, there were some things that Hollywood just uh, did, didn't want to bend on. But uh, the, 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 in, in essence, and I'll tell you, I, I really wanted to come to Temple. Uh, you, and and, uh, and, you had to, and uh, I, I wanted to go there for two reasons. I wanted to try to play football there. And the other thing is I wanted to go there for track and field. And um, there were only so many scholarships that were available and the coach back then, Jack St. Clair, um, when I uh, went head-to-head -head with this guy in high school that he had given a scholarship to, I beat him by a foot and a half. Um, he, he just lowered. <laughs> and I said, you know, coach, I'd really like to come to Temple. He says, I, you know, if you come, you're going to have to pay your own way. Maybe get a scholarship the next year. And, and St. Joe's walks up with a scholarship. And wow. that's why I wound up going to St. Joe's. And, of course, no college football. At that time, I was 5'8", five, 5'9", five, 160 pounds. And by the time I'm a freshman, junior, I'm a freshman and sophomore in college, a 6'2", uh, a buck 80 run and a 9'700 yard dash, you know. And, but, you know, that was the deal. So I go back to Interbro. I, I, you know, I did my thing at St. Joe's. Ran track. I had great, great battles against Temple and just, just phenomenal. And uh, and then I went back to my alma mater, Interbro High School, and became head track coach, assistant football coach for a few years for that period. And I was working my master's degree. And, uh, and in the meantime, I was, uh, as a movie detective, I was playing in those rough touch football games. And my goal was to get into the decathlon. And I, 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 had, I wanted to be an Olympic decathlete. And, and I thought that um, I, I would be able to, uh, I, I'd be able, I'd be able to do real well if I got into a big meet. But none of the meets would allow me to come in, like the pen relays would allow me to come in as a uh, the, the tryout right. and to do my thing, and the Drake relays turned me down. And, uh, and so my, my dream to be a decathlete was that, so I started playing semi-pro football 
and when you know it, um, it leads to a guy uh, uh, whose name is uh, Hugh, and and he was uh, he was the, the new general manager for the Philadelphia Bell, the World Football League, where Larry Zonka, Paul Warfield, Jim Kick, they all uh, they, they all uh, de- defected from the NFL to that team uh, or, or to that league back in 1974, 1975. That league was coming along, and uh, they had a free agent tryout. Ironically, right around the corner from where I live in Cherry Hill High School. And uh, Cherry Hill East it was, and and they had about a thousand guys there, and, and of those thousand, uh, the two guys remain standing, one from Notre Dame, Mike Lozzi, and, and me. And I wound up making the team, and so now I want to leave a absence for my teaching job at Interborough. Then the lake folds, and I'm ready to go back and get my teaching job, substitute teaching, bartending, and who comes along with Dick Vermeil as this free agent tryout, and that's basically where the movie picked it up. Uh, Wikipedia says that I had a I had a private, I had a private tryout with Coach, which, which was not the case. Uh, you know, I was just one of uh, the three or four hundred guys that were out there at, uh, at, at that time. It was JFK Stadium, uh, which is now where the Wells Fargo Center is. Like, that's what they call it this week, right? And um, so that's that's where the tryout was, where they had the Army Navy game back in the day. And um, you know, as, uh, as the story goes, I, I, I wound up uh, getting uh, getting a contract, uh, got the training camp. And uh, it actually wound up leading the team in receptions. But, uh, you know, basically what it is, uh, Chase and, and, uh, and Zach, is, you know, it's getting that chance. And then once you get that chance, it's, uh, you know, being prepared for it. And, and it's sort of interesting that I had a guy who was really influential in my life. Uh, his name is George Corner, and he coached me at Interborough. I coached with him at Interborough, and then he eventually went on and coached the state championship team at Bradner. And, and George, when I was trying out for the Eagles when I was 30, uh, he gives me this quote that says, Happy are those who dream dreams and are willing to pay the price to make your dreams come true. And it's basically the mantra of how, how I go about when I speak. Now I speak in all over the world. And uh, because of the movie, thank you. And, and, and that's what I talk about. You know, you can have that dream, but, you know, and Coach Vermeil says, you know, there's many people have the dream, but it stays in the state of mind. And uh, unless you're willing to pay the price, forget about it. And, you know, I was willing to pay the price. I had nothing to lose. I was in great shape because I was still in shape from the decathlon. And uh, and the other thing is getting that opportunity, you know, and it's what is going to happen now with your football team, you know, with your coach coming in and and, uh, and your quarterback, you know, and now he's got an opportunity to show what he's got. He, he, he uh, certainly, in, in, you know, national TV audience, um, he certainly uh, acquitted himself. He did very, very well. And, uh, you know, so, so he's got good leadership, nice young coach, great facility down there, absolutely phenomenal what you've done down there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just now a matter of getting the athletes in and, 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 and knowing that you can compete against the big guy. No question about it. Philly's number one college radio station, WHIP. This is the main event with Zach Gelb and Chase Sr. And Vince, now let's get to the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, you have uh, this new system coming in with Chip Kelly, and I'm going to be curious to see how that college system translates over into the NFL. But you also have a quarterback in Michael Vick who hasn't been able to stay healthy over the course of the years. And that's another big question mark for this team. When you look at this offensive unit, what do you see on the field? Well, right now I see a lot of speed, you know, and, and that's what the game's going to be. Uh, there, there's a lot of unknowns, uh, but, you know, uh, not, not, not because of some of the talent or the offensive line. Uh, you know, with everybody back and healthy now, it seems to be pretty intact. And if anything, that would be the strength of the team. You know, you've got McCoy, and, uh, name a better running back, uh, in the, at least obviously, as far as I'm concerned, one of the top five out there in the NFL running right now. Uh, a damn good receiving core. And, and as you mentioned, you know, I think the key and the factor are two things. One is, you know, uh, are they going to be able to adapt and adjust to this new system that Chip has and, and keep that kind of pace? And secondly, you've got a quarterback, Mike Vick, who uh, seemed to run the, uh, the watered-down version of, the, um, of his fast-paced offense really well in the offseason. But, you know, how long is Mike going to be able to sustain the hits that he takes? And, and will he be able to do that? And then, you know, so you've got the next guy coming in and, you know, whether, whether he's going to be able to, uh, to to adapt to the system. But, uh, you know, for me as a, as a former player, I've been out to practice several times. Uh, I, I just like I, like I like everything about this organization today. You know, just they seem to be kinder, gentler. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Practices were really cool to go to. Uh, how it's going to translate on the field, we're going to find out uh, real soon. And I'm chopping at the bit. Switching to the other side of the ball, the Eagles defense has really shifted away from that tough, hard nose, hit you in the mouth style of D that the city grew to love and adore uh, over over the years. 
This season, the Birds are transitioning to more of a 3-4 base defense under Billy Davis, who is the defensive coordinator. There's some talent on that defensive line, but throughout the preseason, we saw the defense give up a plethora of, of big plays on the ground and in the air. That secondary looks to be a very weak unit. How worried are you about this defense? Because we know that this offense might be able to score, but if they can't defend, they won't be able to beat anybody. Well, obviously, you know, you can put 40 points on the board, but if the opponent scores 45, I mean, what, so what have you done? Mm-hmm. You know, it's all about that. It all translates to the, to, to the two key letters, you know, W or L. Uh, you know, first of all, I, I'm, I'm really uh, I, I'm emotionally attached to this defense because of my affinity and love for Billy Davis. I've known the kid since he was 10 years old. Um, when he was a ball boy uh, with the Eagles, when I was playing, his father was a coach, and, and I've been following Billy. We're very close. We're still very close today. And and, and if anybody, I'm I'm his biggest fan out there, and I want this defense and I want this scheme to work so bad. You know, uh, they they say uh, you know we're, I, I don't have film study. They say that some of the some of the mistakes were bad angles. You know, guys, uh, you know, not in position to do the right thing because they weren't used to the defense. And that's correctable, yeah. Yeah, and, and that, that kind of thing is correctable with regard to the physicality. Uh, you know, it, it was tough to, to figure out. You know, some guys, if, if you're not real comfortable with what you're doing, it's going to be very difficult to be physical. You know, I mean, I, I was coaching a high school game last night, uh, and, you know, and kids in a position make the play four or five times, and he dives at his feet because he just wasn't comfortable at that particular time. So, you know, there's got to be a comfort zone it, it, with, with regard to that. Uh, and, and then just, you know, just, you just got to play loose and, and play hard. Knowing Billy and the kinds of defenses that he's had, uh, this is going to be a really tough physical defense eventually. Uh, I think it's just guys getting comfortable with the goals and understanding what they're expected to do and then playing it out there with passion on the field. So, um, it, you know, it's an experiment. Don't forget uh, Jimmy Johnson when he came in as a rookie coach, you know, with the, uh, with the Dolphins back then in the day. He was 1-15. in 15. Right, yeah, he didn't have the, gr- the greatest resume either. Yeah, you know, and, 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 and Chip's got this great resume, and, and, and they have a fair amount of talent, and, uh, you know, that's that, that that's where the excitement lies, you know, and, and hopefully uh, the tough fans that we have here in Philadelphia are going to give them the ball again and say, okay, you know, uh, we'll let you go this year, but they, you know, you've got to start playing and get, you know, playing with Ernest next year. But the same thing was the same truth with Dick Vermeil when Dick first came in. We had 14 as opposed to 16 games back then in 76. We had six preseason games. And um, when the coach first came in, we're we're four and ten, uh, you know. But the the, the, the fans uh, the fans attached to it because of how tough we were physically. I mean that that defense that he eventually put together was one of the toughest defenses out there, you know. And each year we improved it. Before you know it, five years from the Super Bowl. So. And they say Rome wasn't built in one day, right, Vince? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, in Philly, I think they want to be built in one hour. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That, that, that's true. You know, uh, Vince, we were actually in uh, Notre Dame, and we walked into the uh, stadium, and there's this sign saying how the Notre Dame fans behave, and it was like the most polite thing ever. And we know <laughs> Philadelphia, it's a raucous atmosphere when you go out to a game at the link. Well, I'm looking at the picture of the, uh, of the, uh, that you have up on your website of, of, of the stadium out there in Notre Dame. What was it like? I mean, I remember walking into Lambeau Field, and I was like, whoa, are you kidding me? And, you know, so there you go. You know, Notre Dame Stadium is is the Lambeau Field of college football. It was unbelievable. The the atmosphere was so incredible, and you could sense the football tradition. Even when you pulled into the parking lot, walking into the building and just seeing all the fans tailgate, and then when you get into that building and you see all the signs in the historic building, it was just really incredible, and we were right on the 50-yard line. We had a great location in the press box, and after the game, we were able to go on the field, and it it was like even the media members sometimes act like they're uh, little kids. Like When they're out there on the field, we saw some of them posing like they were like we're winning the Heisman, uh, running out with the Irish show. It was a very cool feeling in there in, in Saturday in Notre Dame. Well, you know, and I'm sure it was a cool feeling for the players. And, uh, and you know, I, 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 like, I don't know about uh, what the players in the college level feel like because I never played there. But I have to say that uh, my first year in the NFL, when I would walk into some of those different stadiums, I would be in total awe. You know, and, uh, you know, when I walked into Texas Stadium for the first time, uh, I, I damn near had vertigo. I, I was so nervous. Uh, and it's just in total awe because here I was, and, and, and there, you know, was the, 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 the Dallas Cowboy football, you know, the Texas Stadium. And, and uh, the, you know, the first couple of plays, it took me a while to just catch my breath. I couldn't walk 10 feet without needing oxygen. I, I was so uh, shook up. But, you know, they, they, 
I, I think your team, uh, you know, after all that being said and done and being on national TV, did a, did a great job. That's something they can build on, and hopefully they'll be able to, to take it out on uh, Houston this week. Well, Vince, we appreciate the time. Thanks so much, and let's do it again real soon. We really appreciate a few minutes I with us. It. Yeah, thanks a lot, Zach. Thanks, Chase, and uh, go, good luck, Al. Uh, you know, you're one of my three favorite football teams here in Philadelphia. <laughs> And uh, I'm always rooting for you, and, and thanks to a, thanks to so a, much, to a Vince. great guy out there, Al Gold. So uh, see you guys. Good luck this year.